Oh, okay, everyone, I'm going to kick off. Um, <coughs> welcome to my session. Um, it's a session about my favorite module in Drupal, the Views module. Um, it's, it's a slightly technical module for those of you um, who are looking to find out how to use Views. This is probably not it, um, but there's more about the possibilities that Views offers uh, in terms of what you can do in Drupal. Um, so it's a bit of a look under the cover and hopefully at the end of the session you'll have an understanding of what views can and can't do. So even if you've never used views, there should still be something in there, in there for you. Standard Drupal um, is very, um, very singular minded. It knows about nodes, it knows about users, it knows about taxonomies. It knows about some relationships. It knows, for instance, when a node is created, it knows who created the node. So there's a link from the node to user. There are some custom modules that provide more linkage, linkages, like the entity reference, uh, node reference type of modules. There are some lists in Drupal, um, but they're mostly admin and they're mostly coded in Drupal itself. So the question is, what, what do we do if we want to create our own lists in Drupal? So the answer is views. So views to the rescue. And in terms of what you can do with listing data on a Drupal website, the views module really is, is like a Swiss army knife. It knows how to gather data out of Drupal. It knows how to process that data. And it knows how to present that data in lists, for instance. So this is uh, the views UI. This is where you configure views to do what you want it to, to do. And really, beneath or under the covers in views, it's really a very sophisticated SQL statement generator. So if you look at some of the options, the fields options, that's really where the select statement comes from. And before you even go into create a view, you get asked, there's the big yellow box down the bottom, you get asked what sort of content do you want to present in your view, and that's where it asks basically what base table do you want to use? Do you want to show nodes? Do you want to show users? That type of stuff. So that's where the select statement in, S in a, a, the select portion of the SQL statement gets its information from. The where clause in an SQL statement comes from your filter criteria and your contextual filters, which are your arguments. The order by is the sort criteria. You can join uh, your tables to other tables and build relationships between nodes, taxonomies, users, etc. And you can use aggregation as well, which is used in the group bar. So you can sum fields, you can count records, that type of thing. The output that you get out of views uh, is broken down into, um, into various areas. So at the, t at the top of your view, you have your title, you have a header area where you can specify some, some text or part of the content is to display in the header. You have your exposed filters, then you have your attachments before, which is basically another view, within a view that you can show before your main view, uh, your pager, your attachments after, and your footer area. The main content is in the middle, uh, so that's your style content, um, and that is basically where you, you display your content, um, and that comes out of the rows that have been produced by the SQL statement. There are some concepts in Drupal in views um, that, that are worthwhile knowing about. Uh, and this basically is how views hangs together, how it works, and how it, it does everything under the covers. So views has, has a concept called handlers, uh, plugins, and, and templates. The handlers basically prescribe how views deals with the underlying data in Drupal, um, and they help build the queries. Plugins are more about the query building process and the behavior of views. So field handlers tells views how to process the fields that are in your table, the underlying table that is processing. Sort handlers tells views how to sort, uh, the same with filter, relationship handlers, and area handlers, etc. 
So there are all the bits of code that sit uh, in views, inside views, that tell it how to, how to read the data in Drupal. I'm just going to show a bit of a, a demo. There'll be a little bit of code in here, but just bear with me. Um, so it's not just Drup uh, Drupal data that views can, can process. You can also have other data out of other systems and, and even custom tables that you can have views process and display data from. So let's have a look. I created a, um, I have already created a custom table in Drupal. Um, and so my custom table is there and I'm now using a function uh, in a custom module called hook views data. That hook views data function tells Drupal, uh, sorry, tells views what is in your table and, and what to do with it. Um, so I have a table called alumni role, which is basically a list of students that have, um, have studied at a particular university or, or whatever. Um, and then I tell views what is in my table, all the fields that are in there, what title to display in views, what help text to display in views, and then I get to things like handlers. Okay, how does, how does views handle this field? And I say, well, this is just a field, so that's fine. I also want it to be able, views to be able to sort on it in, in a table. That's where the click sortable um, specification means. Then I have things like surname, and I say, okay, well, it's, it's, it's a standard field. Uh, I want to be able to filter on it, and when, I, when views filters on it, I, need to, I want views to treat it as a string and I want to be able to sort on it. So if I specify all these things, then I, when I go into views, it will come up in the sort options, it will come up in the filter options, etc. For the year, uh, again, it's a different field. In this case, it's a numeric field. So I'm telling views, treat this as a numeric field. Uh, I want you to filter it as a numeric field, and, and I want you to sort it. Then I have another field in my custom table, and I'm saying, well, this is a, a term ID. So when you look at this field in my table, I want you to treat it as a, a relationship. So this is a term ID. It has a relationship to the taxonomy term data table. Uh, it, I want you to handle it as a field, as a relationship field, et cetera, et cetera. So that tells views all about my table. Uh, and then I can go into views and I can views, I can go create a view. And what happened now is that here, where it shows show content, now all of a sudden my table is shown here as content that I can create a view for, uh, just by specifying two views that I have that table and what it's made up of and what's in there. Um, so helps if you give it a name. So I'll just quickly have a look. Um, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Sorry? Did you create that code by hand, or did you use the schema module, for example, to... Ah, no, you have to create it by hand, yeah. Um, but if you go and look under the covers in Drupal, for the node table, there is exactly the same code for the node table. It describes all the fields that are in the node table. Um, so when I create a view, now under filter criteria and under fields, etc. Um, all the fields that I specified in my table are all available. Um, the same with the relationship fields. If I want to build a relationship field now, that field that I described in my table is now showing up here because field, uh, views knows about that field. Right, um, so I have created a view um, let me just go back to it. So this is a view that I created based on the table, that the custom table that I had, and I told views what, what to do with the data, how, where to find it, what it's all about. So I can now create a view like this um, for my custom table. So that's how Drupal, uh, how, views, <laughs> how views knows about the underlying data. Um, so my discipline field, there was a term uh, relationship to a taxonomy, so I can make that a drop-down field. 
uh, for the graduation year, because I specified it as a numeric field, um, I can only filter on it by actually putting a numeric value in. Um, and then I can filter it uh, by the particular year. There is some, um, so, and if I have another table somewhere and I want to be able to tell views to, to, treat, uh, to treat it differently, I can also go back and, and change the way views looks at my data. Uh, in this case, I have, um, I have here, I've, I've used a, a function called, a hook called views data alter, and say, so, okay, well, I'm going to alter the view, the way you look at my data. And for this table, and for this field year, and for this filter handler, I want you to use a different handler. And I, here I've specified my own custom handler. And the code for that is down here. But basically all it does, it, it selects the distinct values for the year. It changed the filter handler as a, an in operator, i.e. a list operator. I collect all the years, and, and that's what it does. So if I go in and um, enable that module, then you should see If I go and enable that, um, I probably should clear the case as well. If I now go back to my list, um, now you can see the graduation years treated differently by views. It's no longer a treated as a numeric field. It's now treated as a list field, and I've given it, given it a list uh, of all the years uh, as options. So these are all the years that are in my table. So that's one way to, um, to that's how a views knows about your data. Um, another example is um, I was working with um, CVCRM a little while ago, and CVCRM has um, location fields, a latitude field, a longitude field, but for some reason the, the fields in CVCRM are defined as string, as strings, as text fields, which means you can't do any calculations on it if you want to calculate the distance to that particular point. So you can go in and you can, uh, you can change the way views looks at it, uh, change the, um, the data and say, well, it's no longer, don't treat it as a, as a um, as a string field, but now treat it as a numeric field. And do that for the argument, for the contextual filter, and for the straight filter. So you can do things like that. So if, if the data in somewhere in Drupal or, or, or a module like that is not quite what it is, or not quite what you need, it doesn't quite fit, you can go in and, and alter the way that views treats that data. Okay, other, apart from um, handlers which, tr which look at the views data, we also have plugins. And plugins really control the behavior of views. Um, so the, the things like the page details, um, what, what, what is this view actually going to be in, 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 in Drupal? Is it going to be a page? Is it going to be a block? Is it going to be a content pane in, panes, in panels, for instance? Um, so there are plugins for, for that, and there are plugins for how the content itself is actually shown and, and, and formatted, and there are plugins for how the fields are formatted and, and displayed. There are things like pager plugins that control the pager at the bottom of your list that goes forwards, pages forwards um, and backwards, etc. Um, the green ones, they're the bits that are all themable. So you have templates that control the, the display of that, which you can go and change. There are also other non-themable plugins like the Access plugin, which determine who can and can't see your view and who can and can't see your data. There are contextual filters that your arguments on, on in, inside the URL that can filter on your data. Uh, and, and things like the query settings and, and caching. So yeah, so the display plugin that's where, where it's shown and, and the type of display in Drupal, et cetera. Uh, we've pretty much covered all of that. So an example of a display plugin, you can have a view that's, that's a, a page, which is pretty, um, that are two basic options. You always get a page or a block, but there are many other options um, that are provided by custom modules. 
So you can install modules and, and that will then give you additional options for how to display your data. Content panes and contacts are for panels. Uh, there's an embed display which you can use in code to show your view. It's, it, it doesn't have a UI. Uh, the feed displays, open layers data, which is a mapping uh, overlay, that type of stuff. Then um, you have your style plugins. So this is, if you think back to the SQL example, your display is all your data. The examples, the style plugin is how, is how the row is displayed. Uh, and you have many, many different options depending on what sort of modules you install. Um, but you have like mapping, sliders, uh, HTML lists or tables or just a straight unformatted list. And then within the row, you then have style, row style plugins, which going back to the SQL equation is pretty much your, um, your fields uh, within your row. Um, so there are different options there as well. So what, what does a plugin look like? Um, so plugins, are, as I said, are bits of code or objects that, that control the behavior of views. Um, you, can, you can install them. They usually come with a custom module, but you can also build your own and you can also modify your own. Um, so that's, um, that allows you to extend the usability and, and use of, of views. Um, so one, in, one here is a custom module, it's called the Light Pager, Views Light Pager. Um, the standard full pager in, in Views um, is, is quite um, processing intensive. It, it does a bit of work behind the scene to work out how many rows are in your views and based on that it works out how many pages there are and how many pages you can forward. So there's a bit of overhead in calculating every time how many rows, total rows you have in your view. So there's something called a light pager, which if you have a very, very large Drupal database with lots and lots of content, it can make your views, the pager in your views um, work a lot, a lot better and faster. So how do you create a plugin? Well, basically it's, it's like everything else with views, you just have to tell views that you have a plugin. And, um, and once you do that, it knows about your plugin and it knows what to do with it. So this is the Views Light page. It's, it's, it's a contributed module. Uh, so okay, this, is, um, this is my function. This is my plugin. Uh, and okay, I, my plugin is a pager plugin. Um, if you remember back to a few slides ago, there's all different plugins um, for all sorts of things. Uh, it's a pager plugin. I want to call it Light. This is my title, um, this is the help, um, and my handler for this pager uh, is, is this code here. And what I'm saying also is the parent object for this pager is the full pager. So as a few lines of code, you've told views that you now have another pager as a choice for pager. Um, in here, this is the actual code that does what the light pager does. It basically extends the full plugin, so it uses the full plugin as a base and just ch basically changes the behavior of the full plugin. Um, it, it does a few, a few bits and pieces, basically just based around how it works. The most important one is this one here, and this one says, okay, well, I'm not going to use a count query. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to, um, display a very, very basic pager. You can go forwards, you can go backwards, but there's no, no, no record of how many pages there are, how many, how many records there are, etc. So this here is an example of the light pager. Um, it's, as I said, it just lets you go forward and backwards, um, but nothing more. Um, so that's, that's a plugin, and that's how you define a plugin in views. It's just another way that you can extend the usability of views. You can modify the behavior of views. Fairly, fairly straightforward um, for coders, of course. The, yeah, another one we can have a look at is, is the, the access plugin. Um, so if we go very quickly. 
quickly. So the access plugin at the moment, at the, way, the standard views um, lets you control access to your view data either with no restriction or restriction by per permission or restriction by role. But it's very easy to, to, to write another plugin, uh, as we saw before, just like with the light pages. You can write a plugin which basically takes one of these as a base, slightly modified, and you can have an access plugin that lets you access a view between 4, in, 4 a.m. in the morning and 2 a.m. in the afternoon and not at any other time of the day, for instance. Um, not, not sure why you would use anything like that, but, it, but you can do that. So all of these things in views, um, none of this stuff is fixed. Um, it's, it's all extendable with your own code and with your own plugins and your own um, handlers. Um, so that is, so we've looked at the handlers, which control how views looks at your data. We've looked at plugins, which basically controls the behavior of views, uh, how it displays your data, or what, are they, what it does with the data. Um, then in the third step, we have all the data. Now, how are we actually going to display all the data that views has, has um, gathered? So a lot of the plugins that we saw were um, were themable, which means that the output they produce come through or are produced through a template file, and there are various levels of template files in views. Um, there are global template files for the view itself, uh, for the display. There's a template file for the style. There's a display for the a template for the row style, and there's templates for fields. So there are many different levels uh, within views where you can. Um, change the templates of how it actually produces the output. Um, so here, for instance, um, I'll just have a look. I have a, um, I have a view. I have a view here with, um, with some some items um, which have a, an image, a title, and some text. Um, that could be news items, that could be events for whatever you want to think of. Um, and, um, and this is actually, this is produced using a, um, a bootstrap media object uh, plugin, um, which, which basically displays the image, uh, the title, and the description in a, um, responsive way. So the style output of, of that, um, there are a number of templates um, that you can use or that you can modify. Um, this information comes out of the views itself. If you, um, if you look at views, that's down the bottom right, there's a button that says tem templates and it shows you all the templates that you are available and that you can use and modify. So there's one here. Um, called Views Bootstrap Media Plugin Style Demo 2 Page. So this is a, a template that is used for that style. It's for that particular view, and it's for that particular page within the view. So this is the most specific level of template you can use. So that's the one there. Um, so it, it looks, views will look for template files um, to very general um, for that whole view or very general for a style down to very specific. And like I only want it for that specific page in my view and only for that particular plugin style. So we can have a look um, and, um, and see. So I have basically copied the, the template for the Views Bootstrap Media uh, plugin. And I have altered it so that for every row in that's displayed through the template, I have created a flag, and that flag basically turns on and off for every, for every row that's processed. So when, um, when my flag is on, I'm going to add an extra class to my output. 
Um, if it's off, I'm going to add a class even. So that will allow me to, to have zebra striping on my output. Um, the Views Bootstrap Media display doesn't have zebra striping as, as an option. So you, that's, you have to go into the template and, um, and do that yourself. So if we look at that, we go to here. Um, no, we don't go there. <laughs> so what we need to do is um, basically rename this. I've renamed it in such a way so that Drupal wouldn't, uh, so the views wouldn't find it. Um, I rename it back so Drupal, uh, so views will find it. Um, I'm going to just clear my cache, and if I now go back to my demo three output, and sorry, refresh that, then I'll, now you can see that I have now actually got this, have zebra striping on every row. So my odds, my evens, my odds, my evens. So that's how you can modify the output of, of views by playing around with the templates. So all this, the templates are all there. They're sort of straightforward templates to modify. You basically copy uh, the one that you want to change into, um, into, your, custom, into your own theme library and, and make the changes that you want. Then, apart from all of that, there are also what's called hooks in views. Um, and hooks are basically um, bits of code that, that can intercept the processing of views at specific points and, and change what views actually does. Um, there are uh, different views, uh, sorry, different um, hooks, um, and they, they are they run in, in order from, from when views starts to, to when views actually produce the output. So you can use a hook views preview to change the view before it even starts doing anything. You can intercept um, the building of the query inside the view before it builds it. You, you can alter the query itself. You can change what views has produced after it's built the query. Um, you can then there's the execute phase where it actually executes the query and actually retrieves the data from the database, and you can still change the view before or after that. And then there's the render phase where it actually produces the output. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, and there's a pre-render and a post-render phase there as well. Um, all right. Now I was going to. Okay, so we go back to my first demo. Um, this one here, um, this one allows me to sort the data by surname and graduation year because that's what I've told views that I wanted. I wanted to be able to sort on that. It's the view is is by default sorted by surname, but my problem is that when I click on the graduation year, it's no longer sorted by surname. Yeah, the names are all, all over the place. So I want to change this view and say, well, if, I'm, if I sort by graduation year, then I want my secondary sort, sort to be by surname, which typically in views you can't do. In views you, you can specify how to sort the data, but for this type of output in a table where you can click on a, on a column header, uh, to sort it, you can't say, well, if I click on, if I sort by this, and I also want to sort it as a secondary sort by surname, it doesn't let you do that. Um, but anyway, but um, that's where our hooks come in, and that's where we can use our um, our code. Let's try and find where it was in here. Okay. So here, what I'm doing is I'm using a hook. For views, a hook query alter, and basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, I'm telling views, well, I'll let you build the query, and I'm quite happy with that, but I want to change the query in a specific instance. Um, if you're sorting my query on the discipline, um, sorry, if you're sorting my query by year, 
then I also want you to sort it by the discipline as a secondary sort. So I'm basically I'm saying if that's the view, the name of the view, and that's the display within the view, uh, if you're sorting by the year, then add another order by um, here, and I want you to sort also sort on the surname field, and I want you to sort it in ascending order. Right, okay, I need to, so I think this one here is the one, okay, so here, now, in this one here, now when I sort by year, uh, I've now told views, okay, well that's fine, you can sort by year, but I also want you to sort by surname as a secondary sort, and you can see that's what it's doing here now. So just by making a small change to the query that views has produced, I can still influence how it, how it generates the data and how it displays it. Right, okay, well that's all the heavy stuff out of the way. There are some useful view settings um, that, um, that you can use when you're generating views that um, that are not often used or not immediately noticeable. Um, for instance, uh, here there's a tag column, um, which is people typically not used, um, but if you do have a lot of views in your system, you can tag your views with a specific tag and then you can order it uh, in, that, in that particular order. It's a nice way to group like views together. Um, there are other settings. Um, this one here, always show the advanced display settings. If you go into the views UI on the right hand side, there's advanced settings. It's always closed by default. Um, but if you use that often, you can just see here. Here you can specify, okay, always, um, always show me the advanced settings. The other one is the master display. Uh, every view has a master display. It's not shown by default, but if you want to change the master display, then you can show it there. Um, and there's in here, you can also um, disable the views data caching, uh, which is very handy if, you, if you're building your view, because uh, views likes to cache the data, um, so you may change the view and not necessarily see the difference if, if, it's, if the view is cached. Ah, uh, this one here. Um, yeah, show filters on the list of views is, is also by default turned off, but um, that can be handy if I... If I saved it first, it would work. Um, so now when I go to my list, I can actually filter. Filter my views by the tag. I can filter it on the display. Uh, so there's all sorts of filtering you can do. It's really only handy if you have lots and lots of views. Right. So we have basically gone through the architecture of views, how it, how it retrieves our data, how it, how, it produces, how it processes our data, how it displays the data, and how you can, at every step of the way, change the way view works or, or add additional functionality to it. But you don't have to do it yourself. There are many contributor modules around that provide additional functionality for views. And this is where the power of views really lies. It's not, views may have started out as, as, as a list module to produce lists of data, but it's grown into something much, much bigger than that. And there are many, many things you can do with views that may not necessarily be immediately clear. Um, views, there are a lot of modules for views that produce sliders, accordions, lots of mapping uh, modules that um, 
contributor modules that provide mapping functionality for, for views. So any, anywhere where you can think of n a number of bits of data, um, views, there is a views module that, that will do that. So a map will display a number of bits of data or a number, number of locations. Um, a slider has a number of images that are sliding across the screen, uh, that type of thing. Uh, there are charting modules. Uh, there's a view entity or field um, module that lets you use a view itself as a field to another entity, that type of thing, so it's very clever. View bulk operations is, is handy for an administration. Uh, it lets you do a lot of administrative functions within a view uh, that a standard admin function in Drupal don't. Uh, there are admin views, there are calendar views for for booking calendars, that type of thing. There's a search API, uh, which is replaces pretty much the standard Drupal search, but it's much more advanced and much more um, sophisticated. Social media views and C tools, content panes for panels. So views, um, the views module has has uh, this was a couple of weeks ago. We're almost 900,000 installs around the world. Uh, it's very widely used. There are over 500 contributed modules that are classified as being in the views category. So there are over 500 modules that do something with views, that either extend views, put more functionality in views, or, or use views as, as, as their, their source. View slideshow is, is by far and away the biggest. Um, that will probably go down, I would think. Um, one of the, the disadvantages of view slide, view, view slide show is that it's, it's not responsive. Um, so that will probably drop down. The flex slider, which you see down here, that is responsive, so that number will probably go up. Uh, but even things like the calendar, calendar um, module, um, there's 125,000 downloads of that, or installs, not downloads around the world. Um, Carousel, uh, another big one. Search API is also very, very big for, for large Drupal sites um, and it lets you use things like the solar search engine. Uh, Gmap, uh, very popular, lets you display a Google map as part of a view um, and show locations on that map. Uh, there are other mapping functionalities which are even more sophisticated at as well. Views data export, entity views attachments, and a views accordion. Right. Uh, views in, in Drupal 8. Uh, there has been some mention in various presentations over the last day or two. Uh, at Drupal 8, um, it's now, of course, recognized that views is an integral component of Drupal. So Views is no longer a contributor module that you have to download and install. It comes with Drupal 8, so out of the box. Um, it now views in Drupal 8 powers almost all of the core Drupal core lists and blocks and admin. Uh, so almost everything in Drupal 8 now is, is powered by Views. There are now RESTful views in Drupal 8, so you can not only add, put, um, uh, render your, your data on, on normal browser screens, but you can also now add put JSON and, and XML data. Um, uh, the, the templates that I showed you before, they, um, they're now going to change to tweak templates, to YAML files, uh, and, um, and yeah, there won't be any more PHP in the templates. So that'll be a, a bit of a change. Um, but you can still access variables in your templates. Um, uh, in views, um, you typically have um, your import link here where you can import views. Um, that, that's all gone out of views, um, and that is now part of the configuration manager in, in Drupal. So it's all part of the configuration manager that, that imports and exports any other config. So views is now just part of that. Uh, there's one new display, sorry. One new display, which is the enti entity reference display. So when you have an entity reference field in Drupal, um, where you want to reference another field, another entity, 
you can actually create an entity reference display view that will display and collect the data for you. So if you want to reference an entity over any particular node type, for instance, you can create a view that only references those nodes of that particular type and show that as your, your list to, to, um, to choose from. Uh, if I want to find out more about views, uh, Google, like me, and Google is a more, like me. Um, there's an advanced help module uh, for views, which you can, um, can activate. has a lot of information in it about views. Uh, there's the views API documentation, which tells you all about the, um, the handlers, the plugins, the templates, etc. Um, yeah. Uh, no, no presentation would be complete without at least one kit and union, so. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? I know it was a pretty heavy session, um, but what I wanted to give everyone, what I wanted to do is give everyone a bit of insight into what Views actually is and how it does and how it works behind the scenes. It's probably, um, you may never use it, but it's good, good to know um, what Views actually does and that you have the option of extending it, you have the option of modifying the functionality. And there are many, many modules that you can use, contributor modules that will give you more, more functionality. So if you're looking to do something and you're not quite sure how to do it, uh, look, look at views. It, it, may, it may be what you, what you want, maybe what you need. Um, look at the contributor modules and it's, there's a high chance that you will find something there that will do what you're looking for. Any questions? Uh, well, the only thing we would, that would have changed is, is all, all the code would have changed to, to um, OO code. Um, but other than that, um, no, let's, uh, so just bear with me for a sec. One day I'll learn to type. Okay, if I go to structure views, you will see that it's um, basically hasn't changed. Um, so if I do that. So that's, that's the view UI in Drupal 8. But under the covers, underneath, uh, I would, I'm guessing, I haven't had a very close look, but I'm guessing that most of the code would be the same. Um, I mean, most of the effort in Drupal 8 has been to, to change the underlying way that Drupal does things. Uh, views have just been ported as into the core, into Drupal core, but I don't think much has changed. Does that answer your question? Um, 
if you can find a module that pretty much does what you what you need but not quite you can as I've seen before a lot, lot of them are, are classes you can just extend that class and, and change some of the methods in the class to do what you want to do rather than what the module already did Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, they're not easy. It's not not easy to create a plugin. Um, it's 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 relatively easy to take one that's already there and, and modify that slightly. But yeah, I mean, I'd, it, the the idea with views, of course, is to use contributor modules and use as much as you can of what's already there, rather than building something from scratch. Is that it? Oh, thank you. Oh, one other yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, yeah, the, it's not a distribution. Yeah. Oh, that's good. To know. Uh, whenever I looked at it, you know, it's not just once, so I'll throw it out for something else. <laughs> Um, no, that probably isn't a module for it. Um, what um, what you would do is you would um, oh, come on, what am I doing? Right. Um, so you wanted to change the, um, the join condition. Yeah, the join condition uh, from an and to an or. In this case, um, what you would do here is um, you'd you'd make it as part of the um, use one of the hooks in views, um, and I would probably use one of these um, post build hook. Um, so that. At this point in time, Views has built your query. It's already built everything in. You can go in that uh, user hook, Views, Post, Build, and you can modify the query at that point and just change it from an end to an or. Um, that's one. It's, it, it, it is an um, array, and it can be quite difficult to, um, to work out how, how the array actually hangs together. Uh, it's, it's a bit tricky, but um, yeah, you just you change uh, some of the settings in there. Yep. No, it's not, not, it's not a big long string that, you'd have then have, that you can then alter. Okay, well thank you for your attention.